Hey guys, in this video, I want to discuss with you the physiology of osteoporosis and some things you can do naturally to treat it. For those of you that do not know, osteoporosis literally means porous bones, and it is a medical condition where the bones lose calcium and become brittle, weak, and ultimately results in bone loss. Now, there are many speculations as to what causes osteoporosis, but as we'll learn in a moment, osteoporosis, or bone loss, is really one of the many symptoms of impaired energy metabolism and is one of the symptoms of hypothyroidism. As you'll see in a moment, there are specific hormones that lead to the decalcification of the bones or inverted calcium metabolism where instead of your bones and teeth your heart tissues are properly calcified those lose calcium and it is deposited into the soft tissues like your arteries your skin your scalp and other soft tissue in the body now when your metabolism is working efficiently under a good thyroid function your body produces carbon dioxide and bicarbonate which are responsible for the outward flow of calcium from the mitochondria in the cell into the bones instead of into the cell or the soft tissues. So in other words, it is a healthy metabolism in proper thyroid function, which is responsible for the production of carbon dioxide and ensuring that calcium stays outside of the cell and the soft tissue and is deposited into the bones. In fact, there's even studies that have been done on hyperthyroid mice. So mice with a very strong thyroid and a high metabolic rate actually experienced no bone loss whatsoever. And it was even found that the accelerated production of carbon dioxide accelerated bone formation. Not to mention that carbonate, which is a salt form of carbonic acid, happens to be highly present in newly formed bones. Which brings us to the conclusion that a high functioning metabolism in thyroid in the extreme production of carbon dioxide is not only protective against osteoporosis, but is essential for the production of new bones or bone development. Not to mention that in addition to carbon dioxide, ATP or adenosine triphosphate is considered to be one of the most important substances for protein formation. So that includes things like your hair, your nails, your teeth, and of course, your bones. And it just so happens to be that both ATP and carbon dioxide are produced most abundantly under oxidative phosphorylation, which is driven by your thyroid gland. So what we've come to realize so far is that osteoporosis is really just a symptom of impaired calcium or bone metabolism, which is really a symptom or something that tends to occur when your thyroid is not working efficiently and oxidative metabolism or energy metabolism is impaired, which tends to occur again under hypothyroidism. Now, just to explain in a little bit more detail, what tends to happen hormonally under hypothyroidism and when your metabolism is impaired is that there's an elevation of certain hormones and a deficiency of other hormones. So obviously under hypothyroidism and an impaired metabolism, there's insufficient levels of thyroid hormone amongst usually progesterone, pregnenolone, DHEA, and other protective hormones. But there's an increased functioning of stress hormones like estrogen, prolactin, and cortisol. So now normally when your thyroid's working efficiently, thyroid hormone tends to oppose the production of all these hormones. So thyroid keeps estrogen, prolactin, and cortisol all in check. But when your thyroid's not working efficiently and it's downregulated, all these hormones tend to become unopposed and increase chronically. And estrogen increases or stimulates the production of cortisol, and prolactin. Now, prolactin stimulates the functioning of the parathyroid. So both prolactin and parathyroid, which are stimulated by excess estrogen and cortisol, which increase under hypothyroidism, what they do is they're sort of like stress hormones. So what they will do specifically in regards to osteoporosis is they will mobilize calcium from your bones to stimulate or shock the bones to produce new stem cells, capillaries, and energy otherwise. But over a long period of time, although this is helpful on the shorthand, as prolactin and parathyroid are increasingly functioning in the body, they're going to continually rob the bones of calcium, mobilize that calcium, and try to use it as energy, in other words, in a sort of stress state, so a life or death situation. So now, obviously, over the long term, as your thyroid's not working and prolactin and parathyroid are increased uh, in their functioning, this is going to cause calcium to be robbed from the bones and teeth chronically, which obviously over time is going to decalcify the bones and lead to bone loss. So this is really how hypothyroidism, impaired metabolism, leads to osteoporosis. It results in the increased functioning of prolactin, parathyroid, which more or less rob your bones of calcium to try to use it as energy in a life or death 
or a sort of stress state. So now, in addition to elevated levels of estrogen, cortisol, or prolactin, and the increased functioning of the parathyroid hormone, serotonin happens to be another key player in the pathology of bone loss. In fact, studies have found that the use of the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor drugs, SSRIs, led to excessive and irreversible bone loss in mice. And the way serotonin probably leads to bone loss is due to its effect on cortisol and all of the hormones involved, or the, the pathway of hormones involved in bone loss. So serotonin stimulates cortisol, cortisol has a feedback loop with estrogen, stimulating estrogen, and estrogen increases the production of prolactin, which further suppresses thyroid, increases parathyroid, and prolactin and parathyroid, as we learn, rob the bones of calcium. So with all this in mind, the things that you're going to want to do to correct osteoporosis on a very root level, on a cellular hormonal level, is going to be to increase the functioning of your thyroid gland, obviously, because you're going to want to increase the production of carbon dioxide to ensure proper bone growth and the proper calcification of your bones. Definitely reference all the videos I made on thyroid health, but just for a quick tip here and now, I would definitely supplement with ashwagandha, the KSM66 form, which has been clinically proven to lower cortisol, which interferes with thyroid function and actually increase the functioning of the thyroid and the conversion of T4 into T3. So that's a great thyroid herb. In addition to that, I would recommend utilizing Makuna Periens and Supplemental Zinc, which is most abundant in black ant, beef liver, and oysters. Both Makuna, or specifically L-Dopa or dopamine, and zinc inhibit the production of prolactin upwards to 50%, which is going to be very beneficial for correcting bone loss. And in addition to those tips, so supporting the health of the thyroid, lowering prolactin, I would highly look into supplementing with ginkgo biloba, which is one of the only herbs that actually inhibits the production of serotonin, which is an inflammatory mediator that stimulates cortisol production and attributes to the pathology of bone loss. However, that does bring this video to a close. Before you guys leave though, I would highly recommend checking out the blog post I wrote on this particular topic. I'll link that beneath this video for further information, more detailed information about the pathology of bone loss and some additional tips outside of the ones I gave in this video. Otherwise, if you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for future videos. And again, for learning more or supplementing with any of the herbs I mentioned in this video, be sure to check out our online tonic herb shop in the description box below.